So, hello. As you've heard, my name is Connery Wood, and I'm a junior here at Mountain View High School. Some of you may know me for my work on the school's Science Olympiad team, or from a soccer team in years past. However, as you've just heard, I have a strong passion for the Earth. My mom tells a story of how she would slowly walk in on me when I was a toddler to make sure I was napping. As she'd slowly peek open the door, instead of finding me napping, instead she'd see me poring over a big book of rocks and minerals or of nature and the environment. I'd notice her, and she'd smile at me, and I'd smile back a little guiltily, and then I'd keep reading. Ever since then, I've held a passion for the Earth. This past summer, I found the opportunity to express my passion for the Earth by finding work as an intern at Stanford University in the School of Energy, Earth, and Environmental Sciences. One of my projects was helping a PhD student, Stacy Lewis, with her work on the corals of the Pacific Islands country of Palau. When I first joined her in the office, not in the field, I was told that I would be studying and summarizing the history of Palau. Now, I was a bit confused. I had applied to research science, not history. But as I continued with my research, I found that the historical aspects of the, of the concepts allowed me to gain a new perspective on the environmentalism. My main source of information was the book Palau, From a Colonial Outpost to an Independent Nation, which was written only recently, in 2015, and it is the first book by a Palauan about their fight for independence. A major part of Palau's history was its conflict with the U.S. after it was liberated by them at the end of World War II. The Palauans wanted to fight for independence because it was part of their culture. The U.S., however, asserted control over their lands and wished to use them for a military base and as a disposal of hazardous materials. The Palauans, in part due to their natural culture of environmental protection, refused these desires through force of mouth, not by arms. Palau fought for its independence from the US for nearly 50 years, not counting the previous centuries of occupation by Spain, Germany, and Japan. And they faced many hardships along the way, such as American forced legislature and even local terrorism against the independence movement. But after decades of wading through political arguments with the US, and after lawsuit after lawsuit against them, they succeeded in becoming independent peacefully in 1994. They have now protected 80% of their local coastlines, making their coastal waters some of the best protected in the world. The Palauans have indeed boldly gone into the realm of environmental protection, as the nation is a modern role model for the rest of the world. And with the inspiration of this history, my research became much clearer in purpose. I began the scientific research that I had so hoped for. The scientific side of this interdisciplinary mission consisted of the sorting and analyzing data measurements of sediment off of Palau's coast, both increases and composition of that sediment, because the changes in the sediment can damage the environment. As we can see here, that dirty gray looking water is a massive sediment influx from the land. That sediment can contain dangerous chemicals, such as a melange of pesticides, a wide variety of fertilizers, and further chemicals from industry, such as sulfuric acid. These changes in the sediments, as just stated, are due to the industrial runoff. In order to track those changes, we looked at coral skeleton cores. Corals use sediment in the water to create their skeletons, leaving a distinct pattern, not unlike rings on a tree, that we can use to track the composition of that sediment and the concentration of it in the water. Scientists can analyze those patterns and run chemical tests on them to find different levels of elements in the corals, and in turn, the sediment in the water at the time the coral made that layer of its skeleton. We measured and analyzed levels of barium, calcium, and strontium in the skeletons of the corals. An increase in the barium and strontium, however, is always linked with influxes in the sediment of industry, industry, because that is the main source. Therefore, if we can figure out when that barium and strontium comes in, we can usually link it to an industri industrial push. Thus, we need to figure this out in order to protect their environment. Calcium is the normal element in the coral skeletons, but the corals can substitute the other two into its skeleton when there is enough of either in the water, which makes it a very good tracker. 
My job was to find a way to sift through all of the data that Stacy had collected to find the levels of barium, calcium, and strontium in those sediments, and in turn, the water. I ended up going through about 50,000 data points, and the data I collected is in this section of the box, in that box on the graph. The peak in the part of the graph that I analyzed coincides in time with a large-scale building project on Palau, near the site where Stacy collected the data. By comparing this data to the historical record, we can tell that our methods are successful in identifying when there is a massive push of industry on land near the coast. Looking at the readings, however, we can see that there is a massive increase in sediment runoff in recent years, which is probably related to an industrialization effort on the islands. And since it is part of the Palauan culture to protect their environment, we must make them aware of these results so that they can fix the damage, whether by reducing their industrial runoff or by helping them fix and clean the sediment itself. After all, they didn't achieve the protection of 80% of their coastlines for nothing. And while my research is certainly interesting, or at least that's the hope, I came to realize that the purpose of the research in data crunching was not for merely experience in the field, but to work towards a much bigger picture. The rest of the world does need to follow the Palauan example of environmental awareness and protection. And so we have begun the first steps toward this example. Merely five months ago, back in August, President Obama with, met with Palauan President Tommy Remengesau, as shown here, to talk about how the Palauans have set that example for the rest of the world. Obama chose to follow this model by creating the United States Atlantic Ocean Marine Preserve off the coast of New England, the first one for our nation, and by creating the world's largest environmental preserve of the ocean off the coast of the Hawaiian Islands. As seen here, Obama oversees the final stages of negotiations. In addition, he helped expand the size of Yosemite National Park here in California to preserve the land as a habitat for wildlife and from people who wish to advance cattle ranching and logging there. And he passed legislature to reduce oil drilling throughout the nation. So I think we can all say to that, thanks, Obama. <laughs> but while this is an excellent start to environmental protection, we all must help finish the job, even in the clouded future that we may face. We must persevere and keep following the Palauan example to protect the environment however we can. You too can go beyond the previously conceived limits and work to protect the environment for us all. Even, and in fact especially, the little things can help save the world. Turning off the water when you're brushing your teeth, limiting your sprinkler usage, or trying to time it properly so that there's a minimum of water wasted, or avoiding small pollutants such as microbeads, and anything and everything else you can do to protect the environment, to save water, to use less energy, to waste less, and it will help us give us a better, stronger, clearer, and cleaner future. So work not for the today for yourself, but for the tomorrow of generations to follow. Thank you. <laughs>